a lot of things were happening in, in news, and particularly in television news. CNN came into being during this period when I was signing to be the new anchor and becoming the new anchor a year plus later. Computers were becoming smaller and in uh, more widespread use, not yet in pervasively widespread use, but coming in. Satellites, many more satellites were up, making the availability of satellite time, what we call shoot the bird, um, and the cost of satellite coverage coming down. Jet travel was becoming much swifter and much more of it. The change was just about complete from film, 16 millimeter film being the basic in television used to videotape long since. The rise of ABC News as a third network news power, uh, they had arrived. Um, all of these things were coming together uh, all together as I moved into the anchor chair. Television news was in another period of rapidly accelerating change because of all those things. And because of the technology that we knew, uh, the first executive producer was Sandy Sokolow, the second executive producer was uh, Howard Stringer, Lang Bernardos, and later Tom Batag. We, in the early 80s, came up with the concept of what we can do and what we think can give added value to the evening news is the concept of the mobile anchor. Now, anchor people since the 60s had been going to big stories some of the time, not very often, but some of the time because the technology was such if you went to a big story, you couldn't do the whole broadcast from Vietnam. You could go, as Walter Cronkite did once, and stay a few days or a week or whatever but it was not taking the broadcast there. And here's the point. We realized with the emerging technology and also the increasing size of the competitive pit, with the emerging technology, we could do new things. With the emergence of the, of the larger competitive pit, we needed to do something to distinguish ourselves. And the idea was, you know, we can take the whole broadcast to any place, just about any place on Earth now and get it up on satellite. So we wanted to move not just the anchor person for a cameo appearance or a few days, say, but take the whole broadcast, do the whole broadcast from on site or part of the broadcast. From on site. So we developed this concept of the mobile anchor uh, that uh, some people have said to me, Dan, you don't realize how different anchoring is from what you've been doing as a field correspondent. And you need, th you need to change. You need to change a lot. And I thought about that. Maybe I should have followed that advice, but my thing was, I'm going to stick with what got me here. And what got me here, I thought, was in addition to hard work and uh, God smiling and getting lucky, was also that I had strengths as a reporter, or if I had any strengths, they were as a reporter. So I wanted to bring those to bear. So we did this concept of the mobile anchor, and it worked. And increasingly, we tried it a few times, and it worked, and we could take the broadcast for a day three or four days or a week, the whole broadcast, to different locations. And we did that with hurricane coverage, with what we call the changing face of communism in the mid-80s, which we didn't, couldn't quite see how it was going to turn out, but we knew the face of communism. We took uh, with the emperor of Japan's final goodbye, we took it there. So with this concept of the mobile anchor, and we hadn't been doing it very long when we knew we must be on to something because our competitors began following uh, suit with that. The other thing that we uh, tried to do was because in the mid-80s, that we now go to the mid-80s, there was a shrinkage of, of international coverage of bureaus. They were closing bureaus. At the time when I came to the broadcast, we had bureaus in Rome, Paris, London, Frankfurt or Bonn, Moscow, Tokyo. We had South Africa, we had a lot of bureaus. In the 80s, they began to close overseas bureaus as a cost survey measure. The thought was, well, to make up for the closing of the overseas bureaus, we can't make it up completely. We can take the broadcast there and keep our emphasis on international coverage. South Africa being one example. Uh, 
war in Central America being others, it, it's, it may be an arcane point, but at the time we thought it was important, and I still think it was important. We wanted to keep the flag flying at CPS of strong international coverage. That was our heritage, that was our tradition, it was part of the CBS News signature. So if they're gonna close bureaus and start you know, compressing our ability to cover overseas, we can make up some of it by taking the broadcast, moving the anchor, using a mobile anchor concept. So we tried to, I can't say perfect it, but we expanded that concept during the 1980s.